It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. I'm in the studio today with Lieutenant Lauren Zacchio and Lieutenant Chris Kaminsky of the U.S. Naval Academy. Lieutenant Zacchio is a blue and gold officer liaison, and Lieutenant Kaminsky is a admissions counselor. And we're going to be talking about the track to get into the Naval Academy, one of them, or at least two of them, that might help pave the way. Yes? Absolutely. All right. What can you tell me? Both of you deal with massive amounts of kids and applications and are these a sure route does this sort of help pave the way does it weed out those that shouldn't be going in so if anything i'd say they're very polarizing Uh especially summer seminar because whenever a student attends summer seminar they either find out that they love the naval academy and that's where they want to continue pursuing to apply to or they find out that it's not for them and they decide that maybe they'd like to pursue a different route so it really helps students to make that decision for whether or not it's a good fit for them this is no walk in the park i was looking at video of a summer seminar earlier today and um Yeah, this looks like full-on basic training as I went through it, or full-on plebe summer, but probably, how long is it? It's a six-day program. Six days. Okay. Yeah, instead of six weeks for plebe summer, it's six days, but you're absolutely right. It's, you know, the best that we can do for these high school students to mirror what plebe summer is like. Um, And like Lauren said, um, it really gives the, the candidates, what we call them, the best opportunity to see if they can see themselves going to the school um, once they graduate from high school. So walk me through six days, Lieutenant Zacchio. How does that, what what happens? So day one is check-in day. So Mm -hmm. everyone's flying in, driving in, however they get there, and then they're having the opportunity to start forming those relationships with the other high school students that are there with them, as well as with the midshipmen. Um, So that day's pretty relaxed. They're mostly doing sports and just getting settled. They get a lot of gear, so they're actually in their summer seminar, essentially their uniform of shirts, t-shirts, uh, t-shirts and shorts, whatever it may be. In a sea bag, same way? They don't get a sea bag, okay. they get, um, but they do get a bag to put other things in. The cool bag that they can take back home. Yes, All they right. get lots of cool stuff to take back home. Um, so then after, really ever, after everyone gets there, we do a welcome ceremony, then they all go to dinner and that's when they really start to get together as a company. So we divide them up into companies while they're here. So they're getting that camaraderie and working on that teamwork, which is very similar to what they'd get through Pleep Summer. You do not necessarily have a Marine drill sergeant standing over you screaming. No, you will not have that during summer seminar. That's good to know. And you also, the haircuts? You will not have to worry about getting your hair cut. Okay. Um, We do recommend that for females, you might want to wear your hair up just when you're doing physical evolutions, but there's no requirements for any type of hair changes to attend. Um, So day one's really just the welcome. They're getting to know everyone. Um, And then day two, they actually take their candidate fitness assessment. So that's a requirement for them to actually attend the Naval Academy. They have to pass a physical fitness test. So for those that attend summer seminar, they actually get to take it there. So once uh, they take that test, if they're happy with their scores, they get to keep it. If not, they are welcome to take it as many times as they would like throughout the application process. So it's a great opportunity. It's an incredibly motivating time for the students. So a lot of them do perform very well on that assessment. And is this the same PRT that's required in the Navy? It is different. Okay. Um, So the candidate fitness assessment has a couple extra components than the typical Navy PRT. So then Monday and Tuesday, they go to classes. We call them workshops. So they have different opportunities to meet the professors and see the different classrooms and labs. Um, So they're doing workshops all day. We have a couple different events that happen in the evening. So they'll get to meet their admissions counselor. They'll get to meet different sports coaches. Um, And then Wednesday is really kind of what it all culminates to with our sea trials day and indoctrination indoctrination day. And do they get to go out on the YPs? It would be a workshop day, but during sea trials they're doing um, different stations, very similar to what they would experience at the end of plebe year with the plebe year sea trials. So a lot of muck and mud. Yes. Okay. (laughs) A lot. And by Wednesday night they're sound asleep at seven o'clock at night. Typically by Wednesday night they're so excited just because they went through such a busy 
day together and they went through so many challenges. For a lot of them, it's some of the hardest challenges they probably ever faced and they overcame it together. So it's a very motivating night. They finish it up with, um, we have a picnic that's joint with the summer STEM program. And then they have uh, the Travis Mannion Foundation come speak to them. So it's just an incredibly motivating day. These are kids that have successfully completed their junior year of high school, right? Yes, that's correct. They and can apply between their junior and senior year. All right. And it, how, how many applications do you get thereabouts? Over 8,000. And yes. how many are accepted? About 2,400. Oh my gosh, this is pretty competitive. It is. And you said they're meeting with their admissions counselors while they're in this program. Will that admissions counselor follow them through if they decide that the Naval Academy is where they want to head? They should, yes. It just depends, though, since our admissions counselors are active duty, they may be rotating. Right. Okay. Um, but they would get to meet with one of the admissions counselors to answer any questions. All right, we're going to take a short break. We will be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is Lieutenant Lauren Zacchio and Lieutenant Chris Kaminsky of the U.S. Naval Academy. We're talking about programs open to kids that have finished 11th grade and might be thinking about Naval Academy as the track. Okay, so we're, we've heard about summer seminar six days. We've gone up through Wednesday. Thursday is what? Thursday's checkout day, okay. so they do have career briefs, so we'll have different officers on the yard come speak to them about the different career options they have, and then that is the conclusion ceremony. So we have some awards that are handed out to some outstanding candidates, and then they all get to go home. And again, this is hard work. It is. They're doing obstacle courses. They're being challenged mentally, physically. They're getting pushed in ways and challenged in ways that would really help them see what they could experience while they attend the Naval Academy. All right, moving into the STEM program. So that was the summer seminar, the STEM program. Tell me about that, Lieutenant Kaminsky. Sure, the, the summer STEM program is for students that are going into their ninth, 10th, and 11th grade years. Um, so a slightly different age um, range than the summer seminar. So um, once again, the application opens in January on the 3rd. And for these students, it is also a six day program uh, offered three different weeks. So each grade has their own week. You know, So first we bring in the ninth graders, then the 10th, than the 11th graders, and it's, but each week follows a very similar pattern um, for those six days. So um, the majority of it, as you would imagine, is STEM-based, so they're in the, um, our laboratories and in our classrooms being taught by the professors um, here at the Naval Academy and all, all sorts of different um, STEM-related activities, and they're all very hands-on, so the students are actually building robots or building drones or building electrical circuits. Um, anything that you would find in the STEM field is, is kind of the things that they'll be doing for those six days. What if the kids aren't entirely certain that engineering is the way they want to go if they haven't been in the STEM magnet programs? And, and you probably both know that the STEM magnet programs are sometimes lottery. But so there's these kids that are undecided. Is it... Absolutely, and I, I think that's a very good point to make is that we see a lot of students who apply that uh, on their applications, they, they say why they want to come to the program, and oftentimes they'll say, well, I've never ex been able to experience anything in the STEM field, and I'm just curious uh, to see what it's about. So I would encourage anyone that um, anyone that is interested in STEM that they already know that, but definitely maybe even more so those that haven't had that opportunity to use this as an opportunity to, to really see what the STEM field is all about. And are they doing cool stuff tell me some of the cool experiments yeah no I, th I think yeah. some of the really neat things is the naval academy has one of the largest wave pools um, in the country and and they get to build um, little kind of mock ships and test them in the wave pool um, to see what you know what type of a structure works best against certain waves and certain strengths of wind and uh, so i think that's really neat i personally think that the drones that they get to play with are really neat um, i think we've all seen drones becoming a more a part of everyday life but uh, the opportunity to 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 play with um, some of the you know the very best in technology as far as the drones go, I think is really neat as well. Um, your background? So I'm a material science engineer um, as well as a nuclear engineer, surface warfare officer for the Navy. So this is definitely your cup of tea. I, I'm. Uh, 
a closet nerd, or maybe not even a closet nerd. I, I really do enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy the STEM field uh, very much. And w ratio, because as we've all known, and I don't know if it's the same with the Naval Academy, there's a, a disproportionate number of men in engineering fields versus females. Is that still the case? Is it? Are we starting to see an evening out? I, I think so for sure. Um, specifically for the our summer STEM program uh, this past year, we brought in over forty percent females. Wow. Um, and that was actually not that we intentionally tried to bring in that many females. It was a direct correlation for the amount of or the percentage of how many females applied for the program. So I think that you, we're definitely seeing a shift. And I've noticed that um, at my time here at the Naval Academy when I go on school visits is a lot of females are definitely um, being drawn into the STEM field more and more. And that's really good to hear. Yeah, I think it's really It was good. so upside down. Um, and, and the reason why this is so important at the Naval Academy, the Academy itself is focused on STEM. Uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in order to meet, and I'm reading, the current and future highly technical needs of the Navy. Graduates who are proficient in scientific inquiry, logical reasoning, and problem solving will provide an officer corps ready to lead in each warfare community of the Navy and Marine Corps. However, that said, those aren't the only majors that are available. So if you want to study English and literature, or you want to study political science or Chinese, Arabic, those are majors, yes? Absolutely. In fact, I was a political science major when I went to the Naval Academy. What else about the STEM program? So 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th? Uh, just 9th, 10th, and 11th. 11th. Okay, yes. by 12th, then they're going to know. The, that. And then, yeah, by that time, the 11th going into 12th grade, is that's when they can shift over to the summer seminar program. All right, let's take a short break. We'll be right back talking more about STEM and summer seminar with the Naval Academy. This is Donna Cole in the 1430 Connection. We will be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. I am in the studio today with Lieutenant Chris Kaminsky and Lieutenant Lauren Zacchio of the U.S. Naval Academy. We're talking about programs for high school kids that might be thinking uh, of going to the Naval Academy. And uh, 9th, 10th, or 11th grade STEM program, summer seminar, two different options there. Applications due in January. Uh, is there any sort of priority given to those that get their applications in first? No, there isn't any priority or um, extra chances of getting in if you apply early. Just the if you do apply earlier, there's the potential that you'll find out earlier if you got accepted. So we basically operate the summer seminar and summer STEM applications on a rolling process similar to our actual application. So someone that finishes their application early in January has the potential to find out earlier than someone that finishes the application at the end. Okay, the kids. They will be staying in Bancroft Hall, which is one of the largest dormitories. One of the largest dormitories ever. Um, <laughs> it's beautiful uh, from the outside. <laughs> it used to not be air conditioned. Now it currently is. That is correct. Yes. Uh, is there an off period? Are they allowed to relax any time during this? Yeah, I think they, they definitely get some time to enjoy both in Bancroft Hall and just around the yard. I know uh, specifically for STEM, once again, kind of on the check-in day is a time that a lot of times the midshipmen who are in charge will take them on a tour of the yard and get to see all the different kind of places and sites that are important uh, to the yard. But definitely in Bancroft Hall, they get the opportunity to live as if they were a college student. Um, so they're in any other rooms. It could They could have one or two roommates and or three or four roommates, depending on what type of room they're in and so they definitely get the opportunity to to experience that fully and the delicious food that's served in the cafeteria right absolutely king hall they, they <laughs> put out a, a lot of great food every day for a lot of people it's really impressive all right to the parents that are overly concerned about their kids doing this and getting burnt out in six days and then changing their mind about the academy what can you tell say to them when i personally was applying to the naval academy uh, it was because of summer seminar so That's when cool. I was going through the process, I was looking at schools and never felt that connection with anywhere. And it wasn't until one of my older brothers told me to look into a service academy that I considered the Naval Academy. And I applied to summer seminar and was fortunate enough to get accepted. Prior to that, I was not considering the service or a service academy or even an ROTC program. And after summer seminar, the only place I wanted to go and the place I knew I belonged was the Naval Academy. Well, is that your perfect cheerleader for it? <laughs> so you've been to summer seminar, you went through the Naval Academy, you went out into the fleet and worked, or did you come right back to the academy? I went out and I was stationed on the USS Gunston Hall for four years as a surface warfare officer. And you wanted to come back to Annapolis? I did. This was my dream job. 
And Chris? <laughs> yeah, so I went to the University of Virginia, and I did ROTC while I was there. So mm -hmm. when I graduated in 2011, I commissioned as a nuclear surface warfare officer. So I was on a, the USS Samson out in San Diego. Uh, then I went to a year of nuclear power school, followed by a tour on the USS Theodore Roosevelt, um, in, partly in Norfolk, Virginia, and then partly in San Diego. And I knew that the Naval Academy was uh, a location I would love to, to work at, and so I was very happy when I was able to get orders there as well. Less than 1%, I think, of the population serves in the military now. This is far different than it was when I was younger. It's far different than it was when my parents were younger. There's a huge civilian military gap. Kids today might not realize the need, the the why it's so important. Do you both want to speak to that? I think one thing that I've realized in this job um, over the last two years when I've traveled uh, to different locations, different cities, is that a lot of students um, may may not fully understand what the Naval Academy is all about. Um, they might not think that we're a four-year college um, offering some ac absolutely outstanding academics and um, then not fully understand that if you decide to come to the Naval Academy or another service academy um, or even ROTC that you can join the military and there's a lot of different jobs, um, not necessarily something where you're you know, on the front line, so to speak, but there's logistical jobs, there's supply jobs, there's intelligence jobs, a lot of jobs that you can absolutely make a difference in the military, but it doesn't have to be kind of what you see on TV all the time. So there's a lot of great options um, within the military. And I think the Naval Academy is one of the absolute best places to get an education and to, to start your career. And for those that aren't aware, all students who attend the academy do so on a full scholarship. Navy pays 100% of the tuition, room, board, medical, and dental care. Uh, cost of Naval Academy midshipmen. In addition, midshipmen receive uh, $1,087.80 per month, which covers laundry, barber, cobbler, uh, cobbler, cobbler, <laughs> those are your shoes, um, activity fees, yearbook, and other services, $100 in cash per month. This increases every year. Uh, hopefully, um, and all guaranteed are, are all are guaranteed a job upon graduation, and that job will be lasting for five years. Um, at which time then you can decide if you want to go out into the civilian world and take what you've learned from the, the Naval Academy, which is an incredible education, and apply it in the civilian world, or stay in the Navy and continue serving. Yes? Yes, absolutely. It's at that point just up to each individual whether they decide to stay in and serve for longer or they decide to get out. All right, more information on these summer programs is available where? usna.edu slash admissions. What do these programs cost? <laughs> so summer seminar is $525 and that covers absolutely everything. So that's the room and board, that's all the meals. They get a lot of gear when they get there. So they really can just bring the clothes on their back um, and we'll give them some extra extra gear. They do need to bring shoes and things like that, but um, they get lots of clothes to wear, backpack, water bottle, hat, notebook, things like that. Um, and then we do have scholarships available for that program that can cover both the cost of the program, so that $525, uh -huh. as well as we can offer uh, scholarships for transportation as well. So actually wow. getting the student to and from the Naval Academy. That's nice. That's huge. Yes. All the scholarships are need-based, mm -hmm. so a student would need to demonstrate some type of need for it, um, but it's definitely a wonderful opportunity um, to get students here. And are these kids coming from all over the world or just U.S.? All over the world. Yeah, absolutely. And that's uh, first summer STEM program. It's very similar. Uh, the fee is five hundred and fifty dollars, so just a slightly more. But that once again includes everything for the week: the room, the board, food, um, all the activities. Uh, one thing we didn't mention for STEM actually is that we, one day on a Tuesday we take a day trip to Washington D.C., and so that is included in the cost. So they get to go and visit all the monuments and go to the different museums. And so for a lot of students, once again because they are coming from all around the country and even from foreign countries they get to experience washington dc for the very first time what, and what a great way to dip your toe in the water so to speak absolutely right? yeah, yeah. All right. thank you both for joining me today thank you very much thank really you appreciate it this is donna cole on the 1430 connection we will see you next week